needed to be done. Hey everybody, this is the random wood chat for 2.20, February 20th, and um, we waited until Wood Talk Live was over. It's now over. It's late on the East Coast, it's 7.50 on the West Coast, we're just getting started. Um, it's late here? Oh, I well, guess it is. <laughs> isn't it late? Yeah. <laughs> But Scott and Rob stopped by, so we figured we'd hit. We had already had some good discussion. Figured I'd start broadcast. So, welcome to Wood Chat. Welcome. I'm just gonna sit here and look at my phone for a second. <laughs> Boy, that's that's a great that's an interesting <laughs> video. That is entertaining video right there. Yes, it is. <laughs> so well, anybody gonna... that missed uh, missed Wood Talk After Dark. <laughs> after the after the recording went off, missed out on a good time. Uh oh, it was pretty. It was I pretty. left because the chat room got really. Well, I mean, type in, like type you were, you were still there. I just mean like after the official Wood Talk Online. Oh yeah, ended. it was a good time. Yeah, did you like did you like my play on words for your company? <laughs> Hand in wood plan. <laughs> Um, so Scott, Rob was talking about the annual show that uh, they do up there in the old Northeast, and you guys renamed the show? Yeah, it was previously called um, the Wood Expo, and they've renamed it the Furniture Project, and the website is um, like designbuildshow.com. Yeah, that's right. That's a good. That's a good name change. Yeah, people don't really have a lot of interest in just going to see wood per se. <laughs> uh, yeah. Whereas, yeah, it, the whole obviously focuses on furniture. It's part of the New England Home Show, which is one of the biggest expos we have up here um, at the uh, World Trade Center, right in the Seaport District in downtown Boston. So it has a pretty good size attendance anyway, and mm -hmm. it's. You know, it's kind of nice people come to do, you know, like home improvements or see things that they can buy for, um, you know, improving their their home or, or to augment their house. And then they get this whole entire aisle. We have the whole 300 aisle of the, uh, the show just dedicated to um, craftsmen, furniture makers who are exhibiting their their pieces. So it's, it's really cool. And it's also there to sort of educate the public on, why you know custom crafted hand built furniture is different, better, unique uh, than what they could get at the you know big box stores or their traditional furniture stores. So it's it's really trying to educate the public yeah. as well as a big part of it. That's very important. Do you do you find that it uh it has educated people on that in the last few years, or has there been an uptick in local craftsmen and and all that? Yeah, I mean the the there's there's definitely there's there's a lot of learning that happens among the craftsmen as you know as one element of it. There are some really great woodworkers there, um, some people that I you know always learn a lot from. But at the same time, we're educating you know the general public that comes in to see the show, and it's a mix honestly because it's you know it's eight dollars to get into the show, and probably the cheapest piece of furniture you could buy. Among the uh, the craftsmen is you know a couple thousand dollars. So mm -hmm. some of them come in and you know they ask, well, how much is that? And you tell them, and they're like, what? <laughs> that's <laughs> you know like. But uh, that's part of the education I think that people need and yeah. need to understand is that it's it's not just we're not competing with IKEA. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And you're right. That that's a big part of of the education. And you know, we do demonstrations so people can see what goes into the process. You know, what kind of work is involved, what's inside. You know, why what we're building is totally different than what they would get at IKEA or, um, you know, even your high end, your higher end kind of mass produced furniture stores. So um, sometimes it soaks in. Sometimes people just kind of freak out and run away. But no, everyone always, you know loves to see the process and they really like the the pieces they see but in a lot of cases they still don't understand why they need or should have to pay that much money to, to get something you know craftsman built there's a lot of presentations I'm looking at the present presenter schedule there's a lot I mean it, it's looking like 
woodworking in America type classes for woodworkers. Yeah, it's a it's a full schedule. The f schedule just came out uh, a day ago, so I only s saw it briefly today. Um, but yeah, I mean, typically it's uh, it's just as educational for a woodworker as it would be for you know someone just walking down the aisle that has no idea what's involved in you know making a ball and claw foot, for instance, yeah. or um, you know. <clears throat> Seeing what's what goes into building some of these pieces, dovetailing, veneering, shaping, <laughs> promoting yourself, building your business, documenting your work. Uh, so these shaping. aren't classes. Oh. Sorry, Matt. Go ahead. These aren't these aren't necessarily just classes geared towards wood, woodworkers. These are geared towards just the public and like, hey, this is what it takes to yeah. make this. This is why it costs so much more than what you're you're expecting. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's really That's usually the idea. audience around. You know, there are a couple benches going on at any given time, and the audience is usually pretty mixed between, you know, the woodworkers that want to see, you know, like Chuck Bender was doing Bermuda dovetails last year, and I've I've never seen anyone do Bermuda dovetails before, so I was fascinated by that. At the same time, there were you know kids sitting around watching it, kind of fascinated by it, and their parents. So it's it's a it's a it's a good mix. It's it's interesting regardless of your you know. Uh, skill level or even um, knowledge of, of fine woodworking. Yeah, I'm convinced that that there's a there's there's got to be a renaissance of of fine furniture, even yeah. even a level that's not quite to that level, but of of handmade, custom made stuff beyond just because you watch some of these like design blogs and you know. Some dude in New York will get on there for a piece of uh, for a chair that he made. I found all this scrap wood at the barn and yeah. screwed it together from Home Depot with a Ryobi drill, and you know, yeah. And it always it always gets on there like, oh, it's reclaimed, it's awesome. But I, I feel like there's something that we as as furniture makers are missing there. Like there's this this current trend in, in food. There's a current, the trend in everything of local source. Handmade uh, and, and custom is becoming a big deal, but we haven't tapped into that in the furniture side of it enough yet. I think it hasn't caught on as much. We we we've talked about it before uh, on Wood Chat. Like people talk about being a local vor, right? Mm -hmm. Eating fresh and food, fresh food that's in season from from local producers. Um, and we've talked about you know the Etsy craze. Um, Gee, why would I want to buy these birthday invitations that are printed in China with who knows what kind of ink when the um, the stay-at-home mom, who's actually a graphic artist, but now she's staying at home, can do them for me and, you know, customize them and do them. Like, there's a lot of that going on, or the hand-knit stuff on Etsy and all this stuff. I think for furniture, when I look at those things, the price differential so much higher. It does make it harder. It right, like it harder. your head of lettuce that's organic might be a dollar more, but your dresser that's not from China might be $2,500 more. Yeah. Right, and I hope it, I, I hope it catches on. I, I, I wonder if people are going to, I wonder if people are going to start to get more worried about um, off-gassing in some of the building materials. You know, you got the particle board, or you got the yeah. finish. But I mean, even even the cheap, big custom cabinet makers, or and even non-custom cabinet makers, are moving away from that. But they're because they're big, and they're all you know, you go buy cabinets at Home Depot, you can probably get non-off-gassing, green-built cabinets, quote unquote, yeah. um, for not much more than the other cheap crap that they're selling too. So yeah, yeah that's true. Um. But you heard about the uh, Chinese drywall problem, right? Oh, yeah. Um, that was big down in Florida. Yeah, that was big down. And so, you know, like these guys can buy this this plywood by the container load. Um, and people aren't I, – I don't know. I haven't cracked the code on why it – why with furniture it's not it's not working as well it is, is, as it is with food and some of the other things. Yeah. I, I – good. Uh, I I kind of have a theory there, and I I want to vet this out a little bit more when I'm at this show. But I think 
one of the challenges I think is design. I think mm -hmm. a lot of the people building, you know, craftsman furniture and and you know this this high quality stuff. And Matt and I were talking about this a little bit offline. Um, you know, they kind of they grew up uh, or learned, you know, classically. They were classically trained in furniture making, so they're 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 building like reproductions and period pieces. And there's there's been a good market in that, but the people that are buying those pieces are getting older and they're dying. Mm -hmm. And I've heard this from some of the you know well known furniture makers that that build copies that they're they're you know their buyers are are starting to die off. And I, mm -hmm. I don't mean to make that sound harsh, but that's the reality. And I don't think we've backfilled that with the the newer generations. I think. The demand is there for custom-made things, green things, as you know, you guys were just talking about. But the design hasn't been there to match the um, the tastes of that that new yeah. audience. And I think there's a mismatch. So, you you look at the popularity of an IKEA. Is that is that the design element that 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 group is looking for? And I mean, IKEA IKEA has a whole different. They've got a they've almost got a religious following. At yeah. this point, you know, what is it they're, that they're that they're doing right that we can learn from? What is it that the the food industry and the, and the local restaurant industry is doing right that we can learn from as furniture makers? I mean, as much as we love to beat up on IKEA, I think they actually have really good designers, and they they're building knockdown furniture, and it's made out of inferior materials, but the design is there. So people look at that and say, "Well, if I can get the design I want." and not have to pay a lot of money for it, then I can just get the newest design in five years when this thing falls apart because it got humid in my house. So yeah. I think there's something to be learned I, I from agree. that. Um, I mean, they on every piece, they, they give it a name, and they tell you who, who the designer is. Okay. okay. For them, the, the three components to their company are um, design, Manufacturing and then the way they um, distribute um, their their and they call it their system, right? They have a system for and their and their belief is that they're taking high design and making it affordable. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think the design thing is. I think the design thing is key, and you and, and Matt, you're going to hate this, but you look at Apple and the popularity that Apple's had over the last. I don't years. actually hate it. It's actually yeah. true, and it a lot of that comes down to UI design. It comes down to looks, and and people want, and in that and since they want to pay more, so maybe you know maybe Apple is a place we need to look at. Okay, what what is it that they're presenting that that we as woodworkers and as furniture makers can, yeah. can learn from? That's I think that's a great point. I mean, I just finished reading the Steve Jobs. Actually, I haven't even finished it yet. It's like ridiculously long, but the Steve Jobs biography and his just fanatical, I mean, he wasn't an engineer. He was just a really good designer and he focused on simplicity. And if you think so about that. So we all need that, to be jerks? <laughs> yeah, we have to and, and stop showering. <laughs> was he not, a, he didn't shower? No, he was, he was dirty. <laughs> Really? I didn't know that. I'll have to read that. Yeah. He thought that because of the diet he ate, he didn't have B.O., uh, but nobody around him agreed with that that <laughs> that idea. But, I, you know, I think I think there is a lot to be learned from that. And, um, and honestly, you know, so what Matt and I were talking about is a lot of the, you know, new people, you know, whether it's the old um, uh, sort of system of, of – learning as an apprentice or some of the newer um, institutions like the North Bennett Street School, they're not teaching design. They're only teaching construction and they're teaching how to reproduce what people were building 100, 200 years ago. Yeah. And that only takes you so far. I mean, you could be the best woodworker in the history of Earth, but if you're not building something that anyone wants to buy, it doesn't matter. And so I think we... Mm -hmm. We need to fix that balance. Yes, we do. Okay. So that's that's the call to action, uh, guys here that are that are watching this, that would love to be into full time woodworking. 
design, 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 design. Hi, Matt's daughter. Okay, hi, Rob. <laughs> hey, give me a kiss. Bye-bye. Hope you feel better, honey. Are you going to bed? You going to watch a movie or something? <laughs> okay, tell me later. Okay. Let me shut the door. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you guys an example. Um, that's actually that's actually from my, my, my day job. Um, when we started making games at Microsoft, we could get the software part correct. We were really good at that, right? The corollary there is a woodworker who can cut joints, you know, gets, you know, do all the fundamentals of woodworking. The hard part for us was, okay, the thing runs and it's fast and it doesn't crash and da 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 da, but is it fun? Right? Yeah. And we had to acquire a lot of that. We bought Rare, we bought Lionhead, we bought Bungie, we bought Ensemble, we bought all these companies that had design. And the company struggled on even what's the language we use when we talk to designers, like how do we, how do we manage their careers, like none, none of that stuff existed. Um, I think you could say that that got fixed, but like Xbox We lose Matt. It said that you uh, muted him, Rob. I was trying to mute myself. Oops. <laughs> it's uh, although it's really might... cool to know that I can un... mute Matt whenever I want to. <laughs> you have to unmute yourself there, Matt. I did. Okay, good. <laughs> um, Sorry, so, dude. Anyway, so we had to build a lot of we had to build a lot of um, muscle around. How do we vet designs to believe that they're going to be good before we go build them? How do we measure them? How do we bring in all you know people to play test them and stuff like that? And I think that these and I think it's true with software engineering. We teach people how to write good code, but we don't teach them how to design UI. Um, we also don't teach people in schools how to test software, and so we end up with you know malware all over the place. I think when you look at North Bennett Street School not teaching design. I think that's a huge gap. A huge that amazes huge gap. me. Hmm? That amazes me. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, essentially then what you're doing is you're creating highly skilled labor. You're not creating furniture makers. No. Right? You're creating highly skilled shop labor. And um, Rob was saying that a lot of the times the people who do the design aren't even in the same company as the people who do the construction. So, yeah. it's pretty scary. It's very true. Yeah, I think there's As there's something to be said. You know, I mean, I I I only build my own designs, and whenever I'm designing, I'm always thinking about construction as part of the design. You yeah. know, how will I build this? And I don't I don't ever use the construction to limit the design, but I'm always still thinking about it, and it might influence what I do. So I think when you separate those two things, um, you know, you can end up with some kind of crazy stuff, you know, where you're designing things that either aren't uh, solid construction when it's all said and done or, um, you know, you're just, you're just not thinking about sort of the, the overall balance of the piece and, and what goes into it. So, you know, I think it's more than just, I think you have to know both to really build great furniture. Yeah. Even if you're building furniture with CNC, because I see a lot of designs, again, going back to those those design blogs, there's a lot of designs that come through that are like, oh, look how sweet this is. But looking at it from a woodworker's perspective, construction-wise, that's going to fall apart. 25 yeah. years tops, it's going to be it's going to be toast because it's just not, you know, these guys that are, they can run a computer, but they don't have the opposite side. They don't have the, the, the concepts of how wood works. Yeah. And so it, it does need to have both. Um, when I was at uh, I was at NC State um, for a Lee Nielsen uh, hand tool event, I, I was exhibiting there with my planes, and um, they've got a really cool shop, woodworking shop. They don't have an actual woodworking program, 
but the shop's just there for students to use. And, and uh, the guy that's in charge of it, he's around our age, and uh, he and I got talking about this exact topic, and, and his thing is he's trying to get um, the, uh, the students that are in the design and the art course, uh, the art class at the school to come in and use the wood shop, and that he's trying to correlate with those guys of, all right, how do we, how do we help each other? Because, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're putting out a lot of people that are furniture designers, quote unquote, but they don't have any concept of how things work. And as furniture makers, we need the designers just as much as we need the guys that know how things work. So how can we s scratch each other's back? It was kind of neat to see that, that he's in that position to do that. I, hope, I don't know how, I don't have answers for him how to make it work, but how likely we need more you, of that. How likely do you think it is that people that somebody could do both well? It just takes work. You think you think that every woodworker's got it in to be a good designer, and that every di designer could be a good woodworker? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I bet this will piss off a lot of people when I say this, but I think it's easier to be a good woodworker than it is to be a good designer. Yep. I, I but that's not. Don't disagree. But at the same time, I don't think. Look at how much money is spent on how to cut dovetails by hand. And, and it's enough that every media woodworking company out there has some sort of lesson, probably more than one, on that you can purchase on DVD of how to cut t dovetails by hand. Um, we've got to get the design aspect to that level, where you know. And as woodworkers, we need to start demanding this as well. Maybe. Rob, pitch pitch a design DVD to, to Pop Wood. Say, hey, let's let's get this this other area fixed here. We we've got a serious lack. I don't know if that doesn't pop if that work. Do have a bunch of George Walker DVDs? Uh, I think there's one, but I mean, I know um, Lost Art Press has has got the George Walker and um, Jim Tolpin uh, book. Jim Tolpin book coming out. Yeah, we I'm were excited talking about for that. that before be we were talking about that before you got here. It's like, where is it? Like, we've been waiting for it by hand and by eye. Yeah. Like, but you know, like I've I've had this this conversation with Asa Christiana at um, Taunton Fine Woodworking, and he said, you know what, our we try to do design articles once in a while, but they just don't. They're not that well received because their audience isn't that interested in it. If if you talk to those guys, you know their audience. They just want plans. They want they want to be yeah. told, here's how to build it. Here are the steps. They want to know how many board feet to buy. You know, like they're they're not they interested in. They want thinking. a parts list that they can fax to. Yeah, somebody that's, in the kit. that's who I their audience facts. is. I literally I, need facts. I get I get that, and it, and as much as it sad means saddens me, I, I do see how that's the case, but I do think. And I think the younger generation that lives online is going to be where this is going to be changed. And um, I don't know what the right answer is, but I, I feel like because blogs can be so successful, like Design Milk and, and these other companies online that only focus on design and architectural design, they're huge. Those yeah. are you know well-visited blogs. And if that's... If that's the case, if those are so popular, then to me, I'm thinking, all right, there's a there's a subset of people that are not reading the woodworking magazines now. But if this became something that was a regularly, and, and maybe it needs to be online, not in the print magazines, perhaps. But if one of these companies were to really push this, and obviously it's going to be a slow build. Mm -hmm. I, I've got to think that if you do it right, it'll succeed. I just don't know what doing it right mean, uh, looks like yet. What about Architectural Digest? Do you think that's do you think that's the magazine that that people who design furniture are are, are looking at, or do you think it's Design Milk or some of the other ones? I don't know. I I, 
I and I personally look at like Colossal and Design Milk and yeah. Um, there's a couple other ones. You know, they go right into into my feed on my tablet. You know, I, I check out Flipboard and they're they're on there. I try to check it every other day at least. But uh, mm-hmm. you know, I think somehow we've got to tap into that. Yeah. Somehow. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree, and I think that um, I think the pitfall is that a lot of the woodworkers want the recipe card for how to build a piece of furniture, right? They want to know buy this many board feet, buy this many screws, um, print out this curve, you know, use adhesive to put it on the board, follow this line to make the exact replica of the picture of the thing in the magazine. And I think for design, they want the same thing. Like, yeah. apply the golden ratio, make your, make your legs this long, the overhang of your table has to be this long, here's the formula to determine apron height, here's the formula to determine mortise um, width, depth, and height. Like, pl- plug all this into Excel, and you'll get your, your design out. Right. Yeah. And, I, and I don't think it, I don't think it works that way. It doesn't work that way. Right. You know, uh, Drunkenwood just made a great comment. He said, "Magazines? How about Pinterest?" And honestly, whenever I'm starting to think about a new, you know, I'm, I'm I have to, you know, work on a new project, and I need design ideas. Um, I'm, you know, I'm not going there to copy something. I'm just going there to look for inspiration and look for details that I can potentially incorporate. Yeah. So. And it's funny because, you know, a lot of, I don't think a lot of guys, especially guys our age, spend a lot of time on Pinterest looking at furniture. And no. the more I started doing that, the more I realized how, how great a resource that is. And honestly, that's where my potential buyers are. So if there are, hmm. you know, people in that demographic posting pictures of pieces of furniture that look like, you know, a certain way, I got to pay attention to that because if I'm not, I'm ignoring my entire, you yeah. know, potential market. That's a very so, good point. It's a great resource. My wife has a whole Pinterest board of stuff that she wants me to build, and the idea would be, it would be awesome if you could go off and build all that stuff, take pictures of it, add it to Pinterest, get it to flow around, and then get people to take orders, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. the, the problem I have with a lot of the stuff that I'm seeing on Pinterest that my wife and her friends have pinned is that it's all painted white, <laughs> right? People don't, like, for some reason, people don't like wood anymore. They want white, or, or, or they want that really dark brown, and it's like... I think that's because that's what's being shown to them, and that's what's yeah, being sold. Yeah. Yeah, and that's where we have to do our work. And you know, Rob, you hit it on the head. Guys that are guys and girls that are watching this that are woodworkers, get on Pinterest, start posting your furniture on there. Let's get it done. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I mean, that's how I started. I just started pushing my stuff out on Pinterest, and then I started using it as a resource too. You know, like yeah. I, I think I mean, Tumblr I'm, I'm a be- marketer by trade, and one of the you know key tenets to marketing is you have to know your your potential buyers so well that you can build products that you barely have to do any effort or, or do any, you know, quote unquote advertising to, to sell your product. Mm-hmm. And we don't do that. We're, we're always pushing the rock uphill. We're building what we think is cool and then trying to explain to the market why they should buy it. And that's, that's mm-hmm. a, that's a tough challenge. Yeah. And we don't have marketing departments, right? Yeah. Well, that's that's a whole other discussion, but um you know, if if you look at the statistics uh a, you know, a small business should spend probably 60% of their time there's this 60/30/10 rule, 60% of your time on sales and marketing, 30% on actual manufacturing or delivering of your service, and then 10% of your time on administrative tasks. Wow. Um I don't know many woodworkers that would have any interest in getting involved in that, spending 30% of their time woodworking and 60% of their time doing sales and marketing. That's that's fascinating because I know personally 
anytime I have to spend time on the on the computer, like you know, updating my website or taking yeah. pictures of a new plane, or also, it's agonizing to me. I hate <laughs> it. I hate it, and I feel guilty about it. I feel guilty about being at the computer, um, even right now. Okay, behind me on my bench is is work that I could be doing right now. And in my head, I'm thinking. I should be doing that work. I shouldn't be on here yapping with, with a couple other woodworkers. But I know that. And you, you use know. that term loosely. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, <laughs> okay, one woodworker, and you know, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but you know, I, I have that internal struggle and that fight with myself of, you know, should I even be doing this? But but any time I'm. I can do something like this. I'm building my own brand. I'm I'm helping, you know, further get my name out there and, and all of that. So um, I should stop feeling guilty about that, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, you should feel guilty that you're not doing it more. Yeah. Yep. But, again, every, you know, everyone thinks marketing is just sort of, you know, advertising and, um, you know, doing – email blasts or you know getting their name out there but a lot of it is is learning about your market that's that's really where the word marketing came from so the yeah. more you can interact with your your buyers the better understanding you'll have of what their their needs um, or you know what problems they're trying to solve and you can you can you know better meet those those needs so it hmm. serves a dual purpose yeah Cool. You know, so while, while we were sitting here, <laughs> while we were sitting here, I went and looked at Architectural Digest, and I, I'm thinking I should find either that magazine or a magazine like it, and just just get it where it's where it's not subscribed to it, and where it's not going to tell me how to build any of these things, but it's just going to show me a lot of these things, right? <laughs> In some ways, it will depress you because you know you're right. There's a, there's a lot of stuff that's upholstered, um, painted, uh, that you know we don't like because we like wood as that medium. But you know, in some ways, I feel like I I should be branching out more. I should be doing more with metal. I should be doing more with upholstery. I should be doing yeah. more with with you know mixed mixed materials. Um, but for the most part, I'm I'm doing this as a hobby. It's not you know. I'm not yeah. paying my bills. Yeah, building furniture. Yeah. Oh, I thought for some reason I was thinking you were a full-time uh, furniture maker, Rob. No, can't okay. afford to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just bumped that sixty percent up to eighty percent and dropped the thirty percent to about ten percent. Yeah, made my life a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not doing. Any percent of anything. I'm doing a lot of the. Uh, I'm doing a lot of the research, and administrative. <laughs> That's about it so far. Research is is part of it though, and I I'd, I'd say research is part of the marketing. Yeah. You know, you're, you you got to like Rob said. You got to know what your market is. You got to know. You got to know how to reach them. Well, I'm not doing market research. Oh, okay. I'm doing material. I'm 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 literally doing like. Um, I, I'm I'm I I'm still do I still do a lot of information gathering around um, where can I find those parts I want, where can I find that wood I want, um, gathering of plans and ideas and um, and I put them all in this. Here, I'll show you. Sorry. And this made a big binder. Whoa. And I just, every time I find something, I put it in here. Um, got a bunch of stuff from Woodworking America in here. Got a bunch of, and then I, and then I have a bunch of um, graph paper at the back for sketching. Um, and I carry it in my backpack everywhere I go. And if I see something. So it's your it's your physical Pinterest. It is. <laughs> yeah, it, it it is, and I take a lot of pictures with my phone, um, but you know that's that's got a lot of stuff where it's got a lot of dimensions for projects that I know I want to build, 
and so then I can go off and sketch them. And I like using that as a sketchbook because I can move the page. I can, I could, I could at some point go through and say, I want to take all my sketches out of chairs and put them in one section. All my sketches of tables out and put them in one section. Whereas in my sketchbook, it's like you can't, you can't move them around, and you can't. It's harder to throw away the stuff that is crappy that you want, never want anybody to see. Matt, you couldn't figure out a way to use OneNote to do that. I I'm not a OneNote guy. <laughs> no, I'm not a OneNote guy. What is um, OneNote? OneNote is like Evernote. It's like an online. Okay. It's like a electronic thing. I I might do it when I start using a um, a Surface Pro because they have the stylus. And it's got uh, Wacom pressure sensitive stylus built right in. So I might do that, but for now I like paper a lot. Yeah. So. Yeah, Matt, we'll work just um, pointed out that you're a scrapbooker. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. That's cool. It's called scrapbooking. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's awesome. I also took all of my tool manuals and three hole punched them and put them in a big binder, too. Ooh. So that's not you. All domesticated. Maybe, yeah, maybe that is a <laughs> Dude, if you want to see if you want to see binders, you should look at my wife's binders, they're ridiculous. <laughs> hey hey Rob, can you uh can you tweet out your uh Pinterest account? I can. I have to I don't find even know how I, I've looked at Pinterest a couple times. I don't even know if it's an account or a page. I don't I don't know how it works. I need to get on there. I don't even know if I have an account on there. Yeah, you can have so you have your account, and then you also have your you can have multiple pages or, or kind of like um, pin boards. Pin boards where you you assemble like so. My my parents have been after me for like three years now to build them a sideboard. So I'm always like throwing some stuff in this folder. A um, sideboard ideas. <laughs> a side, yeah. Um. So you can use it either for yourself to assemble ideas or to it, it's kind of frowned upon to post your own your own pictures. The idea is to get other people to pin your stuff. Um, but everybody right. kind of does it anyway. Right. But you don't you don't really want to go create a pin board of just your own stuff. That would be sort of right. waste away, you know. I'm not a 35 to 45 year old woman, but um among that that crowd, that's that's frowned upon. Yeah, I I think another area that we should be looking at is uh, I don't know if you guys are much uh, real familiar with Reddit. Yeah, but uh, there's an entirely entire woodworking community on Reddit. Okay, what? <clears throat> but most is of these real? guys, yeah, uh, r slash woodworking, and uh, Reddit slash I don't remember how it works, but. Um, I admittedly don't go on there enough, but there's a lot of guys on there and girls uh, that are just posting pictures of, of stuff they make in their apartment. And these are really? I, I saw a guy that did a whole dovetailed this this tray for this antique box that he bought with only a coping saw, and I think his chisel was a screwdriver. It, it was something crazy. And he actually did, I mean, it was really rough, but it fit the piece he was making it for. But he did it all by using like one clamp or two clamps possibly and used his um, coffee table as his workbench. And he showed pictures of how he did it. But I, there's, a, there's a group of, guy, of people out there that are trying to get into woodworking, and I don't think they have any idea that something like WoodChat exists. I doubt they have any idea even possibly that, that the woodworking magazines exist. Because they're internet only and they just, they're just they just trying to get into it and they're struggling through. Um, I think there's a, that's another untapped area that, that those of us that are online woodworkers that have a passion for this need to be getting into and, and being a part of. Yeah, that's, that's, that's cool stuff. You know, I think so on Wood Talk online, Mark made the comment that, 
you know, n nobody's inventing new techniques, right? Like everyone's just teaching what they've learned before. And I think in a lot of ways, there's probably stuff we could learn from people like that who are, you know, figuring stuff out on their own. And in, in, in some ways, you know, I've tried to spend less time online reading, you know, the, the, the internet um, forums around woodworking and, and the chats just so that I, because you start, you know, everyone starts consuming that same exhaust and everyone kind of buys the same tools and uses the same techniques and, you know, everyone's building a robo bench and yeah. like, I don't know, there's like these trends that happen mm -hmm. in some ways. Like I think that hurts creativity. Uh, so I, I think that's awesome that, you know, there are people just out there doing stuff on their own, like making a chisel out of a, a screwdriver and clamping stuff to a coffee table and still making great stuff. Cause you know, they were complaining about the trolls that have, you know, 95% of every tool that's ever made and they still haven't built anything. And then they <laughs> criticize, you know, that you're not using the proper tool or using the right technique. Well, yeah. There's no rules. Well, you know? That's not very safe. I mean, there's obviously there's something to be good for safety, you know, but at the same time, like use your imagination once in a while. Yeah. In a safe um, way. <laughs> Chris Schwartz is coming out with, there's an article coming out with that, uh, his traveling workbench. I don't know if you guys have seen that on this, on the blog or not, but it's this little, I think it's 36 inches. Not even, it's not even that long. Uh, 30 inches maybe, and it's got a tail, essentially has a tail vise in it, um, or a wagon, or what's the vise that, that slides in the groove? I can't remember. Wagon vise. I think it's a tail vise. Um, wagon vise, yeah. Um, but it's got a wagon vise, and then it's got essentially like a moxie with, with two screws, but it's got multiple. Um, uh, let me just find the link here. Hold on. <laughs> no, but you can pants him. I was telling him. I, I saw him at. <laughs> um, I was telling him that I, I got to talk to him at uh, Highland Woodworking here a couple weeks ago. That he needs to he needs to get this thing featured on on uh, Woodchat or not Woodchat, but uh, um, the Reddit woodworking community because those guys would eat it up. Because most of these guys, again, are, they're in in uh, apartments and. So I'm trying to find it here. Um, but, but, but. You guys don't have to be quiet while I search. Sorry, I'm. <laughs> I was looking for looking for something. Uh, let's see. Yeah, isn't dead air supposed to be a bad thing? <laughs> yeah. We we need Chris here to fill in the gap. Hey, it's 11.30 my time. I'm getting sleepy. Yeah. Sliding Dead Man. Is that, is that what's on that thing? No. The Sliding Dead Man's on the, on the front of a bench. The yeah, it's a front of us. No, it's a, it's a, I think the wagon mm -hmm. vice is what you were talking about. Yeah, it's a wagon vice. Let's see. Workbench is... Portable workbench. There it is. All right, I'll post this up on... The old... Twitter. Twitter, that'll never catch on. No. Never. Hmm. I never realized that Reddit. Yeah, I've spent no on time on Reddit. Neither have I. But I'm going to make that a favorite. <clears throat> um, I think if nothing else, if we can, because Reddit's the same type of thing as what you're saying about Pinterest, Rod. If, if you share your own stuff on there, they kind of yell at you. Yeah. But um, I think if if we can get a few woodworkers to be posting like just about wood chat, you know, yeah. just try and get that up on the. You know, to get some following on there, I think, I think it could do some good things for the the woodworking community in general, and breathe some fresh fresh life into, and even the online community. As as strong as our community is, I think you know, growing is is a, a positive thing. 
Well, if there's a potential for it to also reach kind of the buying audience too, that that to me would be interesting because I I think that's because we do we spend a lot of time we like talking to other woodworkers. That's what we're doing right now. But if you're trying to sell stuff and there's another, you know, to me that was that was the initial reason I got on Pinterest was to try to reach that that audience yeah. that's likely to you know be buying my stuff. Right. So, you know, that's 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 what's interesting about all all these, you know, new channels as well. It gives us a new way to, you know, kind of find people that we wouldn't otherwise. Yeah. And Rob, seriously, if, if uh, I, I guess what we have to do is, is just have this gentleman's agreement amongst woodworkers is to share each other's stuff on Reddit. Yeah. yeah. And, and on Pinterest. And, on and Pinterest. it's gonna it's gonna help us all. Um, and if if you can get people to start sharing some of your amazing furniture designs on there, Rob, it's going to get voted up. And that's how Reddit works. It's all a voting, you know, people right. plus one the the story. And then once you get on front page, Reddit shuts down websites because they get so many people, you know, going through there. So um, we just, we got to create a, a groundswell movement of just getting the word out there of, of what we do and, and helping each other out for sure. That sounds like a uh, like a whole topic we should probably explore further. I mean, that's yeah, yeah. You know, if if you look at what we've we've all done, I mean, we all know each other purely because of the internet. I mean, like I've met yeah. Matt in person, but for the I'm most sorry, part, we all know sorry. each other from, <laughs> <laughs> from online. Um. So there's no reason we can't use that also to reach a new audience, you know, instead of, and, and, you know, I get it, Scott, like you're selling to woodworkers in a lot of cases. So that's, that's obviously, um, you know, this is an audience you're trying to reach and, and right. Not. But I want to, I'm trying to do both though. Yeah. You know, only, only one aspect of that is not going to keep me, uh, keep, keep food on the table. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> but. So yeah, I'm all all for uh, trying to get that that groundswell going. Yeah, I'm in. That sounds like a an excellent topic for for next week. Desk and type. <laughs> See, Matt, you, you you bring like a little, you know, somebody new from the outside, and yeah. Matt, did you join the Blue Man topic. Group? Uh, no, I turned off my light. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought I was watching Blue Man for a second there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you need the the crazy lights and the water splashing <laughs> off you. <laughs> Matt, that could totally be a second career for you if the scrapbooking thing doesn't work out. Yeah. And then you can just say you can go around. Right <laughs> you can walk <laughs> around saying, uh, "I just blew myself." <laughs> I just blew myself. A a anyone, rest of development fans out there. <laughs> I don't have time to watch TV. Netflix, man. Netflix. Yeah. It's my only TV. I've been watching other things on Netflix recently. If you haven't seen Kevin Spacey's new series on Netflix. I need to check that out. It's unbelievable. I, I love what they're doing with that. I, I, we're getting into, into Netflix chat, but I love what they're doing with, like, they just dump all the episodes out there. Uh, they're going to do that with the next season of Arrested Development, which is fantastic. So, so here all the, the here's the bad part. I watched all the episodes over the course of three days. Like oh really? Staying, staying up in bed with my phone plugged in, like holding, <laughs> yeah. like burning my eyes. Like, oh. I've I've done that. Yeah. I I caught up on the uh, the reboot of of um, Doctor Who in about two weeks. Nerd. <laughs> Anywho, I have, folks. I admit it. Back to back to woodworking. So, um, Rob, do you have any pictures of that table you were telling me about? I don't because I just finished rubbing the finish out two nights ago. Um, but they were taking photos today when I dropped the piece off, so I'm hoping to have it on my website tonight, uh, tomorrow. Okay, when you do and you tweet that, when you do, I assume you're going to tweet that link or something? Sure, yeah. Um, put the wood chat hashtag on there. Okay. So that people pick it up because I'm 
interested in seeing because I've never seen you do live edge work before. Yeah, I hadn't either. Did you see all the live edge? Yeah. Would you just... Well, it's not. So it's not. I didn't leave the bark on. I debarked the live edge, so it's still got the. Right, but it's got the natural curve and stuff. But it has all the natural curve, and I. I designed I designed the whole carcass around the top, so I took That's you know cool. the contour of that piece and then created the curve of the front apron to match that. That's very cool. That's very awesome. Cool. So um, you you don't have a you don't have a picture of it. You said I don't. I don't have um, a picture of the finished piece. Although so marketer my, you are. Well, I've got the. <laughs> <laughs> I just finished it the other night. I didn't have time to do any any photos. Um, I've been posting, so my current blog series, my current video series is up to episode five of creating the project, so people can see up to episode five of the construction of it. I'll have the final picture posted, um, like I said, tomorrow. And then I'm also, hopefully, if I have a good internet connection, I'm going to try to stream live from the furniture project that over the next couple awesome. days. Because there really is some very cool stuff there. Does it start this weekend? It starts tomorrow at noon. Wow. Okay. I know it, I, I streamed live from uh, from WIA in Cincinnati this year, uh, last year, and I uh, streamed from the, the Lee Nielsen event in Raleigh, and people loved it. So, yeah. Great, yeah, I saw your stream from WIA. It was the f I, I couldn't make it this year, so it was kind of a uh, almost like being there. Yeah. So that, that was kind of what gave me the idea, actually. If so, cool. if I have a decent internet connection, I'll I'll give it a go. That'd be great. But um, yeah, I'll definitely post pics of the uh, the finished piece once I get them. Cool. cool. Well, what do you think, fellas? You want to wrap it up? Rob, yeah, I think so. You right. I think so. So, okay. uh, so next time, it, should we uh, should we do the topic of sharing each other's work and, and I think so. helping each other out? I think so. To further uh, the cause, using using Pinterest to to uh, understand what your market wants and to connect with them. Cool. And Reddit. And Reddit. And and if anybody else has any ideas of what to talk about, obviously bring that along. So, cool. Yeah, I mean, I've even had success with LinkedIn. I mean, I've I've sold a couple commissions just from people that found me on LinkedIn really? too. Yeah. That's so you got pictures of your work on LinkedIn and everything? Um. Yeah. I have. I mean, mostly I just list my business and then have a link to my main. I, mean, I guess I should wait and ask this next week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's cover this next week. Yeah. Excellent. All right, folks. Well, that's Wood Chat for February 20th. It was kind of impromptu. Good topic, though. And next week, we're going to talk about using Pinterest, Reddit, LinkedIn, other online sites to understand what your market is looking for and how to connect with them. Hey, guys. Thanks a lot, Scott. Say bye bye. All right. See you guys. See, peace, Rob. Thanks, everybody.